my floss tube friends. Uh, we are here again. It is episode three of uh, Lala D Stitches. Um, I, I'm excited to be here. I'm sorry that my video is a little delayed in coming out. My head decided to be enemy number one um, for the last half of this week and I I was just unable to do pretty much anything, so, uh, but I'm feeling a little bit better and I wanted to uh, share my stuff with you, share my stuff with you and please excuse any foggy brain. I didn't film yesterday on purpose because I was worried about being a little fuzzy and it might still affect some things today, but we'll do our best and um, have a lot of fun looking at big progress and a little bit of haul. Okay, more than a little bit of haul. And some a birthday start. What else do I have for you today? Uh, I have plans for a couple new starts. And, and then at the very end, after we do our normal video, we'll go into my finish parade, which is not for the most part, it's not fully finished. There are a couple, I mean, last week I showed you um, Yellow Submarine, and I'll pull down, and now that I'm looking, I'll pull down those little butterflies too. Um, but I don't I don't have a lot of framed, finished cross-stitch projects, unfortunately. Um, a couple I've given away, and then the rest I just haven't fully finished, so. We're working on changing that, but until then, I've got a pretty little iron stack <laughs> down here. Um, and then after the cross stitch finishes, we'll do uh, embroidery finishes, which are mostly just loose blocks that will eventually go into quilts. And then a couple, not very many, but a couple of applique block finishes as well. Um, but we'll save those for the end. That way, if you're not interested, um, you don't have to stick around, though there's fun. Um, yeah, okay. So I want to make sure to welcome you. Welcome back if you've come before. Um, if you're new, welcome for the first time. Uh, we have a lot of fun here, I think. I have a lot of fun. <laughs> um, I had questions in the comments from my last video about the last unicorn. It's just such a cute project. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a color printed picture. It's a digital pattern I bought on Etsy. Um, but I do have, I went and found the color. So you can get an idea of what they want it to look like. Oh, fiddlesticks. One second, maybe I'll try not to touch all the buttons. <laughs> okay, so this is the last unicorn. Um, it's, the pattern is put out by Tiny Modernist, a uh, little sampler. It's so cute. I love it. And I instantly recognized it for what it was when I saw it, fell in love and bought it. It wasn't expensive and I just had to have it. <laughs> and, uh, so then I, I don't typically like stitching on black backgrounds. I can do it. You know, it's not that it's impossible. It just isn't the funnest. So I tried to find, when I saw this linen at Acorns and Threads, it's Weeks Linen Seafoam 32 count. I thought it was so pretty and how gentle and lovely the last unicorn would look on it. Um, but the reason I haven't shown her before is because she's in timeout. Because in the picture you could see the original, she she looks pretty much white. I mean, she's not white, but but she looks white, which she's supposed to be. She's a unicorn, right? Um, but she's not stitched in white. <laughs> Apparently, when you stitch on black, it looks white. It reads as a white. But when you stitch on sea foam, she looks brown. Well, tan which isn't very unicorny, right? I mean, it's just, so I'm, I'm in debate right now on whether or not to rip her out and 
choose different colors to give a more of a unicorn look <laughs> on um, on this linen. In fact, frankly, I'm leaning that way, and I think my my reticence has been that I just don't like ripping out and I don't want to do it but I haven't gone any farther because I also know I'll be happier <laughs> if I make her truer to what she should be anyways that's the last unicorn she's in timeout I've got a couple projects in timeout we'll get to them they're not going anywhere <laughs> Okay, um, uh, the next question I had, um, and it's actually cropped up in both videos, is do I, how do I stitch? Do I use a hoop or do I stitch in hand? Uh, the answer to that is I stitch in hand. I don't care for a hoop. I was taught uh, to cross stitch and embroider both using a hoop. And, and that was great, and I think, frankly, it was a good way to learn. Um, so if I had a little girl, I would teach her using a hoop. Um, it's, it just makes a lot of sense to learn using a hoop, to have that tension on your fabric and to learn tension as you're learning to stitch, especially if you've never stitched anything before. Um, just, oh heavens. Okay. Sorry for the little gap there. A uh, phone call came in and of course it interrupted my video. <laughs> uh, there's real life for you. Um, anyways, I think learning to stitch in a hoop is a good way to do it. And I have had projects if the fabric that I'm working on is too floppy or I'm just struggling with. Sometimes if it's too small, it's harder to hold rather than having more fabric to grip. Um, I will, I have a full little set of spring hoops. I do prefer spring hoops when I do use them as opposed to wooden hoops or plastic hoops. I really don't like, they slip, they don't, I find it difficult to hold tension with them. Um, but my spring loop, spring hoops I I really like and I can give it just a little gentle tug and it tightens up for me and um, they're easier to put on and off um, yeah so my mom growing up I would watch her and she would use a q-snap or a hoop or she's pretty consistent about that um, but honestly I think it took some of the pleasure out of stitching for me it made my hand tired I always wanted to like anchor my elbow on something, my knee or my chair or a table or whatever, so that I could be like a stand for my, <laughs> for my hoop and then stitch. Um, and when I started stitching again about, let's see, that was about six years ago, almost seven years ago, I decided to try not using hoop because I knew I didn't like it. Um, and, and I just, that elbow problem discontinued because I just didn't need to. It was manageable in my fingers. And, and so, yeah, I stitch in hand. I don't have any problems with tension 99.7% of the time. I don't embroider in hand. I don't embroider in hand. I don't embroider in a hoop either. So I have... A, a lot of practice of, you know, just reading the, I don't know, reading the fabric, reading the thread, the tension, I don't know. It just becomes inherent almost to know when to stop pulling with practice. And so, yeah, I, I don't use a hoop. I, <laughs> uh, if I ever have, I have one project, um, consider the lilies is large 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 I mean that's probably not even how big it is um, and so that has a lot of fabric and so when I do have a lot of mass I find it annoying to flip the fabric up and scoop my hand under there do a stitch and, and that whole game um, so I have curled it up and I clip so that I have less bulk to move around as I'm stitching um, but I still do it in hand so yeah 
that's that. I've got my notes down here because I realized right after I finished my last video that <laughs> I had neglected to mention a few things. So I'm going to try to be better about following my notes, um, which I immediately realized. Oh, I'm covering it up. Okay. I wanted to mention um, or start mentioning um, people I have watched because I tend to um, brain fog. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Um, I tend to either watch floss tube or watch TV shows or movies um, while I stitch. Occasionally I'll listen to a story, a book on tape, but um, I don't know. I just watch things mostly. Um, and I've gotten a lot of tips on some fun people to watch. And then as a couple of people have uh, very generously shared my floss tube on social media, I instantly go check them out. One of them was Hugo Stitcher. Um, she, I was already following her videos. She's delightful and her projects are spectacular. She does a lot of samplers and she's got a good focus on samplers right now. Um, she's working on Dutch Beauty for her birthday stitch and it is, I mean, gasp worthy. It's so beautiful. <laughs> um, her videos are a lot of fun. So, and she was kind enough to share my first video on Instagram in her stories. And so I, uh, I have a terrible memory. I went and I was like, ooh, who's she? Well, I already followed her. <laughs> I knew exactly who she was as soon as I clicked in. Um, the other one, uh, my notes are naturally gone now that I'm speaking. The other one I will have to follow up on and put down in my um, notes below. But she, was she mentioned me in one of her floss tubes and she does this really fun little history segment at the end of them at, that I really enjoyed um, as well as having some really pretty stitches going so um, I wanted to kind of share the happiness of other floss, floss tubers right as I watch them and enjoy them um, so I wrote them down somewhere Oh my goodness, you guys. <laughs> Why am I doing this today? I should have waited another day. Okay. Um, floss tubers. I've mentioned Virginia Stitcher before. I always keep up on hers. She hasn't done one for a couple of weeks. Um, Stitching Faye. I really enjoy her. She does some gorgeous... I mean, she does a lot of Marabilia Nora Corbett. Um... But she does other things too, and they are beautifully stitched, and she finishes a lot more than I do. <laughs> um, anyways, I love her videos. They're wonderful. Uh, really enjoyable. Uh, you've probably heard a lot lately about Sarah's Stitchy Spot, which there's a reason. She's delightful too, and I checked her out this week and have gone back and watched all of her videos. So <laughs> um, I'll put little links down below for... Uh, those five, I think I mentioned five ladies and their floss tubes because I think we're a community and we should share each other as much as we discover them. Uh, so yeah, pretty fun. So that's what I watched this week. Um, I also watched all three of the extended versions of Lord of the Rings because I spent many hours on the couch and it was low volume in the darkness <laughs> in cave mode. Um, but that was delightful. I'm also keeping up on Rings of Power, which I don't know if anybody else is watching those, but I love it so much that I rewatched all three episodes <laughs> before I watched the new one yesterday. Very well done. I'm enjoying them. Um, they're kind of a prequel to the, well, they, not kind of, they are a prequel to even The Hobbit and everything. They go a couple thousand years before all of that, which is really exciting. It's kind of the build up to everything based off of the Samalarian and Unfinished Tales. 
from J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, brain. Okay, let's show you what I stitched. Uh, let's start with my birthday stitch, which if you're on my Instagram, you'll already know what it is, but you haven't seen any progress and I stitched quite a bit on it. I think she's going to go really fast. So for my birthday, I started Virgo, which is apt. I am a Virgo. And when I saw her, oh my goodness, I just, she's so pretty and I love her butterflies and, um, and I liked the scale of it. I like the idea of having you know, a pretty lady that's smaller <laughs> that I could finish sometime this century. Um, she has quite a few beads. I went out and got, I think, three of the needed five or six. And, um, and so I will, because I was moving fast enough on her, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be ready for beading before I know what to do with myself. Um, where's my little card? Uh-oh. ruh -roh. Well, wow, my magic card. Oh, it's behind. Guys, this is how this video is going to go. I'm just, I'm just warning you. Uh, uh, okay, Virgo. That's where I got. This is a silk thread. I love it. It's so pretty. I've kind of played with how I'm stitching, how I load my needle so that I can get the colors to match because we've got an arch that comes down around this side too. So I'm going to try to make it descend into the deeper pinks as I go as well there. Um, not that it super matters. It's going to be gorgeous no matter what, but I um, I definitely want it to, I don't know, it's, it's the artsy side of it, right? Um, she is on, oh, fiddlesticks mystery linen. I want to say it's plum. It's, I don't have it right here. I thought I was all set. Well, mystery lemon, linen, 32 count. I know that much. And yeah, this little hole is where her necklace, she's got kind of a choker thing with ribbons coming up here. Mm. And this is a butterfly. I am so excited about this one. I'm doing the called for colors. I haven't changed anything out. Hmm, she's gonna be so pretty. I think I'll get her done pretty quick. Okay, so Mondays are my Mira Mondays, and I swapped out Eliana for my Stargazer. There's the original. And if you're new, my little backstory on this is I, a long, long, long time ago, <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away, I lived in um, Mississippi for a couple of years, and they didn't have a lot of crafty shops. But one day, I was across the bay, and I happened upon the cutest little cross-stitch store. And I wasn't currently cross-stitching, but I knew what it was. I'd finished a couple of things and in the past, and when I walked in, she was here, and I recognized the Mirabilia company from my mom having done some of her stuff. And I thought she was the most elegant, magical lady. <laughs> and so even though I had no idea that she had beads involved or when I would do her, I purchased her pattern and I... Also, uh, the lovely woman who owned the shop or worked there, I don't even remember which at this point, she helped me pick the linen. I had never stitched on linen before. Um, so it was a scary idea and I did not start her until 2019, 2020, somewhere around there. It's been, it was a solid decade or more before I picked her up again. Um, but I've made progress on her. So, oh, I forgot. Here's where I was at. Let me see if it recognizes my face. Library starting book. Okay, here's where I was. So I had a really solid start on her. And honestly, I didn't do 
a ton ton. I only worked on her one day, but I did fill in work and there's magic in fill in work. It doesn't feel like you're making a lot of progress, but she has a face and all of her ribbons are now complete except for any bead work that may or may not be involved. And then I did some fill-ins in her little scallops here in her dress. And I extended this a little bit. Oh, I think she's just beautiful. I love how she's coming to life. And oh my goodness, doing the back stitching on her face, worth it. It gave her new life. So she will have some beads coming up above her in kind of an arc. Um, I don't have any of her beads yet though. I should probably get them in the next couple weeks because I would love to um, keep her my Monday focus at least for the next few weeks um, through fall and because I don't know why she just feels like autumn, <laughs> which is weird because there's no leaves or pumpkins or anything that we normally associate with it. But something about the warmth of the linen that she's worked on. And then, I don't know, autumn moons are, they have a specific vibe to them. And I feel like she fits that. <laughs> it's this weird, weird brain connection. Don't mind me. Just over here being awesome. <laughs> I also, because I was pr pressing all of my um, finished projects, which have been sitting in a bucket for who knows how long eons, I got press happy and pressed all of my projects in general. <laughs> so they look much prettier this week than they normally do. Um, I need to stop closing my iPad. Sorry, as I go completely out of frame. Okay, my next one is Totoro and the Hydrangeas. This is where we started. He's very cute. He is being stitched on 30 count Weeks Linen in the color Lilac with the called for DMC. And I didn't do a ton on him. Honestly, I've had a lot of days where I just haven't had time. It's been a busy week on top of a week of migraines, <laughs> head exploding. But I filled in some green here. I did pretty much all that brighter green there and then started over here. And then I think I did that little lime green on his hydrangea leaf. It's going to be so pretty. I'm really excited to get down, oh, down into this lower section because... Um, he has a whole, I mean, he's the Totoro and the hydrangeas, so he's literally sitting in a bush of hydrangeas down here. So you'll get a lot of the, the blues and the brighter greens, and I think it will give it a lot of pizzazz. So. Okay, next one is Hive Rules. Uh, by Primrose Cottage Stitches. Here's the finish. And I'm stitching mine on Seraphim Linen 32 count in the color Sunflower Fields. And here we go. I filled in the honey pot, did our little bee. And I filled in this border and then these little words. So not a lot, but you know, every little bit counts. This one's really fun. I haven't worked on it yet this week, but I haven't really worked on a lot this week. So it's as far as we got. I'm still really enjoying this one. Super cute. I think it's one that will hang in my kitchen when I'm done. Okay. Ooh, I made good progress on this one because I couldn't stop stitching it. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just kind of get in the zone with something. It, it just hits all the right spots and, and it's fun and it's starting to come to life. And so you get extra excited. So this is Umbrella for Owl, which is a kit I was given for Christmas last year. And he's so cute. 
And um, when you last saw him, I had misidentified his <laughs> parts. Um, so he looked like this when you last saw him. And I remember, I was looking at him, I'm like, oh yeah, I think this is part of the um, mushroom here. Because, you know, the colors, it's not an illogical leap, but it was an incorrect leap. And, well, his cute little face is what that little green was. It's his chin. And this is where we are. Woo! <laughs> his cute little eyes. For a couple of days, he had no gold in his eyes and he looked a little creepy. It wasn't great, but he now has a definitive orientation because <laughs> he's looking crooked and I love getting the leaves in there. I'm super excited to get up into the mushroom because it has all those yummy reds and purples and, but I'm gonna keep working on his body for a while before I do that. Anyway, there he is, umbrella for owl. Super cute. I'm so happy with him. He's not going anywhere in my rotation. <laughs> I think I'm gonna to try to finish him this fall. Which sounds super ambitious, but I, I think I can do it and I'm motivated. Okay, so next we have my Waisaki, oh, fiddlesticks. I don't have a before picture. Okay. This is River, Bra hmm. River Bank Train St Station by Charles Waisaki. It's an old uh, dimensions kit from 1982. Um, and this too was a gift. I love Charles Waisaki artwork and so it was an exciting gift and when last you saw all I had was red and green on here so I have added uh, the gold and some brown this weird little spot here is actually going to one day be a bookshelf <laughs> and this unfinished sign will say books You know, starting to make more sense. I really wanted to get the tree on there because I added that brighter gold and I had some serious doubts about my linen choice. But as soon as I got the brown on there, it just kind of settled in. And I think once you get all of the little golden French knots that are the leaves and stuff like that in there, and then the train and it builds out, it's gonna look really good. This is, I swapped out the eight o'clock that was originally with this uh, for Weeks Linen, 32 count, it's a Confederate gray, but it's definitely a brown gray. This is reading pretty true to color, so yeah, I'm excited about that one's progress. I don't know how much attention he'll get, but I'm doing uh, kits on Thursdays right now. Dimensions kits, or just kits in general, and... Um, where did this one go? I've got a picture and no project. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it slid off the pile. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Probably because it's all bundled up. Anyways, um, so I'm kind of, I was super scattered this week. I don't know if it was just like the new moon or, or what it was or anything, but, or the full moon. But I, um, I, um, There I go again. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> I kind of bounced. I would give like an hour to this and a couple hours to that and just kind of went by uh, what my mood was rather than trying to like pound through anything. Um, so next one is Cozy Cove Dimensions Gold Collection. See if I can hold this still. See if it will focus on the picture. Nope. Getting closer did not help. <laughs> um, this one is gorgeous. I think it it just screams like end of summer, beginning of fall, kind of right where we are right now. And with the leaves starting to turn, but there's still a lot of foliage and, um, oh gosh, lighthouse sold. I don't know. The details of this are delightful. It's another Charles, we Charles Waisaki. Uh, it's based off of one of his paintings. 
and oh fiddle well <laughs> this is where I was <laughs> oh heavens that's where I was and I really just focused on the tree mostly but even though this is half stitches you guys this is like thousands of stitches that this covers it's kind of crazy. So it's half stitches on 18 count with three strands of Ada and it, Ada, floss. And it is tight. <laughs> when you get into those, those spots, you've got six or more strands going through one hole. And so it's not fast, even though you would think it would be. I, I picked this up with the cocky intention of being like, oh, I'll just finish this tree. Well, Ada had another story for me. And so I wanted to put a little bit of this in. That's almost to the top. Oh, I think that is the top. Yes. So that is the top edge of the project. And it just kind of gave me like this boundary line for the corner that I kind of, it was satisfying to establish, I guess. <laughs> um, anyways, coming along nicely. I love when you get back from it, how you start seeing the movement of the leaves and everything. I'm excited there's that first big house starts down here. It'll be fun to get more going on that. I'm not in a hurry with this project though. Just enjoying it. Okay, Fridays are my fancy ladies or fairy Fridays. So I worked on My Earth Goddess by Joan Elliott. I just think she's beautiful. She is beautiful. And when I started, I think I have a before picture of her. Perhaps not. That's okay. I'll just show you what I've got. There she is. So I had this arc established already and just like the top portion right here of her skirt and maybe like one thing going down to try to get some shape because I like doing that. I like taking a tail down that's like, oh yeah, something's happening <laughs> here. Um, but I was loving her warm cinnamon kind of earthy colors. So I filled in a lot of this area and then I established the grass line and then the stems of two mushrooms. And this linen is a mystery. I don't know what it is, but it's got that pretty little fleckle through it. It's just, I don't know. Even though it doesn't have the marbling of the uh, display picture, I thought it was really, really pretty. And um, it's kind of washed out. I'm trying to get, uh, it's definitely green. But kind of a, I don't know, it's not like a mint green, but it's a really soft sage. It doesn't go as yellow as some sages. Okay, this one, okay, I love this project. Here's where we were. Bella Filipina, Gaia the Earth Goddess. Oh, oh. she's so pretty. I, I love 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 this project I found out two weeks ago that she has beads and krynik in her but you know that's okay we'll do it this is where I was let's get an angle on that and I started out so stitching on her by having to rip everything from here down to there out because there you see these little sections where it's like five or ten stitches right there. Well, I'd missed an entire section. So this whole long stream was like four to five rows too high. It was not a good day in the coal house. Uh, anyways, I was a good girl and I ripped it out and then I ignored her for a day and then I came back because I actually love her and I said I was sorry, and we're friends again. 
And then I made a ton of progress <laughs> because she's so beautiful. Oh my goodness, the colors, everything, everything about her, the shape, the colors, the, it feels like there's wind blowing through her skirt, like she's leaning into it. I don't know, I just, mm, I love this. And here's the exciting thing. So I have this spectacular linen, right? Oh, 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 yeah, it's gorgeous. It's called something. I had a tag for it. It's called, oh, there's a tag on it. That's convenient. It's called Mind Blowing, and isn't it though? Uh, Fortnite Fabrics 32 Count Mind Blowing, and it is so gorgeous, and I loved it. I didn't even have any concept of what the colors would be other than from the picture when I bought this fabric because I just saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, her antlers or wings, fairy wings, they might even be, um, they have that kind of purple tint. And then we've got this kind of like plum color down here. And, and wouldn't it be cool to have the, the tie in and like my, my mind went mad. Well, <laughs> so I went out and found, um, the, it calls for a couple of silk floss. It's called, it's a uh, Karen water lilies espresso and watch what it does on here. It's perfect. Look at those colors and it's going to pull out that purple and all the warm golds. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it was everything I could be do to not be like, okay, where can I stitch this on here? Because it needs to start stitching right now. Patience is a virtue. I'm just going to work my way down her skirt and, um, and we'll get to that little puddle of purple at the bottom and it'll be super satisfying to stitch. <laughs> oh my goodness, she's so beautiful. So I made a lot of progress on her. There's a lot more to do. She's, she's no small lady. Okay. Um, I, we had, um, Saturdays I've been doing Sal, so stitch along Saturdays. I have a number that I have not, okay. I have never kept up on any Sal. <laughs> and so in my attempt to redeem myself, I have devoted a day and I bounced between two over our last break. Um, let me see here, my pictures, be small. Oh, run away. Okay. Nope. Okay, so this first one is the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Excuse me one second. Ugh. Ugh. All right, we're good. <laughs> um, Halloween Spooky Sampler. And when last we met, I had this corner and most of H done. I didn't have the door, the windows, or this little pathway yet, but now I do. And a whole nother letter. <laughs> He's so cute. I, I just get such a tickle out of these ghosts. They are, <laughs> they're so cute. They just make me think of little Casper the friendly ghost. They're so happy and they have such round shapes. And I love them. Um, I have swapped out uh, some of the colors. So the ghost is done with, I want to say it's Lighthouse, Week Sty Works Lighthouse. And I swapped out the house color. Um, I've added, basically, I've added in some over dyes just to give it a little more interest because this would have just been a block of white otherwise, which is cute, but. I mean, I've got the floss, so why not play with it, right? That's the fun part, making it mine. Um, this is Belfast Linen 32 Count Vintage Stormy Night, and it's actually, I realized this week, it's painted, which I didn't know that I had any painted linens, but it's lovely. I'm enjoying stitching on it. And I think I'm going to try to complete one little square every week and that way I'll just get it done this season because it's not a big one. I mean, that's the full width of it and it's three by three. So it's really just going to be 
this tiny little project. Maybe it'll be a pillow or I don't know, something. It's, I think it's really cute. It's fun to work with the brighter colors. As much as I love the, and I do, love the autumn colors, um, you know, sometimes you just want a rainbow, so. <laughs> um, my next one that I bounced between is Lakeside Needlecraft Fantasy Sal. And I was working on this little guy right here, this little wizard, who I started, oh, heavens, started stitching, and I was like, oh, this will be good. He's kind of an autumn block. Did I stitch any autumn colors? No. <laughs> That's fine. It's all good. <laughs> so this is where I was. My blurry little before picture. And, and this is where I got. We have a wizard, mostly. <laughs> And he will have a couple little autumn leaves and his, his broom is brown. So I guess that's our nod to autumn. Because even though it doesn't start till next week, it's autumn in my house. Our heat broke blessedly over the weekend. Oh my goodness, we had smoke and heat wave and it was a really rather uncomfortable weekend. It just kind of settled into the sound and the valley here that I live in and it was hot and stuffy and blech. Not my favorite thing. Um, but thankfully that broke. I mean, I would say by Wednesday, the air was clear, like truly clear. And, um, well, mostly we've got a little bit of a haze, but you can't smell it anymore. And the air quality is gone to, you know, an acceptable level. It's not gonna like murder you if you walk outside. Um, though, interesting note, as bad as it felt after a relatively drama-free summer, <laughs> as far as nature goes, um, a memory popped up in my Facebook memories. You know how those like haunt you every year? Um, and two years ago, so 2020, the year of years, <laughs> um, a Portland area had historic fires and it was, it was the apocalypse, you guys. It was one of the scariest things I've ever experienced, especially six months after the onset of the plague. It was just like, okay, here we go. And six months after that, we had an epic ice storm and oh my goodness. But our air quality two years ago in Portland was over 400. That's not breathable air. That's not even air at that point. <laughs> so this last weekend we were at 167, which when you normally float between, you know, 30 and 50 felt really bad, but it was nothing compared to two years ago. So count our blessings, right? My goodness. There are people who have had far worse air quality for most of the summer. So I'm grateful that it didn't get to what we've experienced in the past. I'm gonna hear a little plastic here. It's like the one thing I forgot to take out of the plastic bag. Sorry. Okay, I finished a project. Not fully, but, but it's finished. Okay, you guys remember, oh, pfft. scaredy cat. Oh, you guys, it's so cute. I'm so excited. So I had to go digging because I, well, first I had to order black because I was completely, completely out. And then this is the saga of Scaredy Cat out of black. And then I was getting close to done with the black and I couldn't find terracotta. <laughs> I had a whole nother pumpkin to do and I couldn't find it. And that was sadness. And I don't have a before picture. No, I swear I do. Just, we're going to keep looking while I chatter. Um, oh no, it's not. Okay, forget it. Forget it. Anyways, I found the terracotta. The black came in the mail. My paper's not long enough to support this because he's long and skinny. But we have dun, 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 
Scaredy cat. Oh my goodness. Is he not so cute? Those little curled up backs. You know how cats do that? And they go, rawr, 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 rawr. they make the funniest sounds <laughs> when, when they get startled um, or when there's something that they just don't like. I am so happy with him. I think he's so cute. It helped a lot to add the back stitching around his little lips here. There's not a lot of back stitching on this. It's really a pretty simple stitch and it's mostly block stitching. So once you have the shape established, it just goes um, super fun. I'm really happy with this. I'm not sure how to finish it because it is such a funky shape and I frame my own stuff. I haven't paid anybody to frame anything at this point. Um, I don't know, but he's gotta be on my mantle in two weeks time. So the brain wheels are spinning at this point. So that's my finish. Yay. It's like the first of the finish parade because it's the most current, but it's technically not part of the parade because it was done this week. I almost put him in the finish parade, but then it felt silly. So, okay. <laughs> so that's everything I worked on this week. It's quite a bit. Um, just let me get a drink real quick. Okay, let's do haul. Haul is fun. Haul was a lot. I do not, okay, hauls will not be like this all the time. I had some birthday spending money and then I had some just things that came across my path that I couldn't say no to. <laughs> and so it was, it was a bit of an extravaganza in the excuse of, it's my birthday, even though none of them were really birthday presents, <laughs> except for my birthday gift to me. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll start with a couple of loose ends because they don't really have, a lot of things I bought were floss that have a purpose or fabrics that have a purpose, but sometimes you come across a fabric that or a pattern that isn't going to be part of today or tomorrow. Sorry, my little thing is falling off. Um, but they take your breath away and you have to have them. And that happened a couple of times this week. So first of all, I went and visited Thread Needle Street, which a couple of you guys had told me about. But you guys, you totally undersold that store. It was so much fun. I mean, first of all, very understated entrance. I was not certain I was in the right spot until I saw the sign. Um, but, and then I go in and it's not a big store, but she has so much stuff in there and it's good stuff. And she was so friendly and just helpful and I had the best time and I spent all of my spending money and it's all good. Uh, the first thing I found was this linen, which I don't have a project for, but it's gorgeous. Okay, let's be honest. I think she's gonna go on a ferry because that just seems appropriate, but you never know. I'm not gonna commit to that yet. It's just, I mean, it doesn't even matter which side you look at. They are slightly different. One's a little darker than the other, just a little more intense, a little more detail. And it's coming off, it's a little bit more carnation pink in person. I mean, it definitely has that peachy feel and it's dusty and stuff, but, um, but it just, it makes me think of one of those flowers that has like the lighter to darker effect to it, kind of an ombre and oh, I saw it and I, had to have it. Um, it's Picture This Plus. The color is Glory. And I think that's an appropriate name. It's so beautiful. I am dreaming of some, I'm looking for the perfect thing to put on that. It'll come. It always does. Okay, the next thing without, okay, this one has a little bit of a story. This one, I, I'm growing into Prairie Schooler. I like their stuff, but I haven't really done much of their work and you know you just wait for the one that kind of speaks to you 
Well, I was flipping through this uh, bucket of patterns, of prairie schooler patterns, and this one I had never seen before. And it made me so happy. Um, it sounds so silly, because I don't have kids, but it's three Billy Goats graph. And here's the story. I had have a lovely, wonderful grandmother who I didn't get to see very much growing up. But our visits were always very special. She lived um, on the west side of Washington and I grew up on the east side of Washington. And, um, and so we'd go and visit sometimes in the summer for a couple of weeks. And uh, I have more memories of her than my sister does just because she was so tiny. Um, but I have some really, really sweet memories. And one of them is there was this specific park we went to that had a bridge system. So you'd climb up and play on this side and there was a big long bridge that went over to another section of playground. And we always, when we visited, went to the same park. It must have been convenient to our house or something like that. Um, and then after we played at the park, we would go get a happy meal at McDonald's. <laughs> Which, you know, when you're between the ages of five and ten is the bee's knees. Um, anyways, my grandmother, both of my grandparents on that side worked full-time jobs. They were career people. Uh, they were family people, too. And, but they were, I remember a lot of them, like, settling us down in an area to play and... And then them being, I could find them in their office, basically. You could hardly get into grandpa's office. It was full of trains and papers and, <laughs> but that's where the movies were. So you had to go into grandpa's office for movies and you went to grandma's office for hugs and food. <laughs> and, and basically anything else. Um, but my sweet grandma would, <laughs> Read us the three Billy Goats gruff. I'm gonna to try to relate this without crying um, or getting overly emotional. And so when we would go to this playground with a bridge, she would watch us for the most part. But then at some point when we were under, when we would be playing on the bridge, she would come up under the bridge and play the troll. <laughs> My sweet, beautiful grandma would be the troll. And, um, and we would be the billy goats and we would just reenact the story and I don't know. So when I saw this, I instantly thought of my grandma. There's an alternate pattern that is smaller. I'm not sure which one I'll stitch yet. I love though that this is like dead and dry and it's like greener, grass is greener on the other side, right? Um, yeah, I don't know which one I'll stitch yet, but it instantly made me think of her. So I will be doing this at some point, probably in the next year. Because um, it just makes me happy and it makes me think of happy times, you know, happy memories. She died when I was uh, 14, so I haven't seen her for a long time. Okay, my next thing, I don't know what it is about Santas this year. I am just into them and I've been collecting Santa patterns for like the last six months. And I'm kind of picky about it, like I... I think that there are a lot of Santas out there that are cute, but they're a little bit too cutesy for me. I like the old time, traditional, like Norwegian-esque kind of Santas, but I also want them to be interesting. I don't know, look at me being picky. This one though, I think is, oh, I don't know if it's the border, or the moon, or the texture in his beard. I just think, I think he is so handsome. And I love this Santa. It is Wishing Thee Merriness by Homespun Elegance. I've not done one of their patterns before, but when I had to buy floss on 123 Stitch, he found me. So. So I'll be starting him this year. I have, I think, three Santas that I'm starting this year. I don't know. They just are speaking to me. I have this piece of even weave. You know, it's just oatmeal even weave. I think I might try to coffee dye it or something and stitch him on that. I love the texture of it. 
I think it could work. Yeah, found it while I was digging around for patterns and trying to identify projects. Because I just don't keep things once I finish a project. I kind of like pass along the pattern and identifying some of my stuff was a challenge. Okay, so my next few purchases were floss or linen or both for projects that I had kitted up partially and uh, planned to start this year. But then I pulled it out and I was like, wait a second, I'm missing like vital pieces or wait a second, I don't quite like that. So the first, I don't quite like that was this Autumn Lane, Autumn Town. I actually bought this pattern last year and kitted it up with the other half of what I'm stitching my Earth Goddess on which is that kind of sagey, not truly yellow, not truly minty, you know, in between color. And I pulled it out this year. Last year I thought, okay, well, it's not perfect, but it'll be great. And I pulled it out this year and I was like, mm, it's too blue. Even though it's not really truly minty, it's still too blue for dead grass fall. Um, so, <laughs> so we went back to square one. I also was missing, these are Gloriana silks. And this one specifically is impossible to find right now. I have checked one, two, three stitch, everything cross stitch, thread needle street. I, I mean, I've kind of been around the block. So instead I have bought <laughs> more than I need to try to just play. And what I think I'm gonna do, since I have, I have six beautiful silks down here, I think I'm just going to randomize where I put so if it calls for this one here it's the same thread technically here same floss here but I'm going to use a different one that's similar but different maybe from this one up here does that make sense I'm just going to play with it I'm going to use most of these colors if not all of them so first I found a much better linen this is parchment doesn't look like parchment it's very green by fiber on a whim, but we don't care that it doesn't look like parchment because it's really gorgeous. Ooh, it's a little more green than it's showing in the picture, but it's so pretty. And I love the marbling, even though that this is pretty much full coverage, there are spots that um, the linen shows through. So that through there, that back there, in there, around the path. That's all exposed linen. So they're using the color of the linen as background, really, for the stitching. It's, be, it's part of the scene. So the linen had to be right, right? I mean, this is completely justified. Yeah, I'm a terrible winker. <laughs> okay, here are my collections of Gloriana's and it looks like I've got also uh, Butterfingers uh, Thread Gatherer Silk. Oh fiddle. Because I was trying to replace the color I couldn't find. So this one is called for. One of these middle ones may be called for. I don't even remember at this point. But I was just trying to get, well there we go. That's a good way to do it you know, leaf colors. Not all trees go that color. Some of them stay really brown and blah. Some of them go, you know, really vivid. Some of them drop green leaves. So I was just trying to kind of recreate, you know, nature um, in my choices. I think it's gonna be really fun though. Have a tree that's popping or have a tree that's just like one of those crunchy dull brown ones. You're like, most maples um except for the maples in Spokane okay Spokane is the city I grew up in and there's this park called Manitou Park which was historically a zoo and um there is a road that drives by it that has I mean they have to be over a hundred year old maple trees and every year like clockwork they turn into glorious sunshines and on those gray wet days where where it just doesn't feel like there's much light around you 
those trees every year are radiant. They are absolutely the most spectacular trees. So we had to have one radiant, spectacular floss in honor of those because that's, it's hard to beat. That's autumn right there. <laughs> Wet gray days and then mother nature coming in and absolutely taking your breath away with this this tree that glows. How can it glow when there's it's such a dull day? But they do. I don't know. I'm on a tangent. I'm blaming my head. Okay. This is going to be a start in the next couple of weeks, probably. Hocus Pocus. We all know. The second one's coming out. It's going to be awesome, we hope. But either way, the first one was awesome. I don't mind these, but I don't really have any desire to stitch those two. I do want that one. I think it's super cute. I love the little, um, oh my goodness. Don't focus on me. There we go. <laughs> um, the little Jack Landers are really cute in the frame. I don't know. It's not fancy, but it's really cute. I'm, I'm happy with this one. Excited to start it. So I have, let's see if I can do this without making a big old mess. I had two of the called for there we go. So these two were called for colors and I didn't have the other three. So I just pulled from my stash and kind of picked warm yummies that I thought would be pretty on my little charcoal linen here. Yeah. It'll be fun. And as you can see, I bobbinate my floss. I know. Some people are very opposed to that. But I don't have any problems with it and I find it a very tidy way to store things. So it works for me. Um, okay, do we remember this one? Heartstring sampler three. <laughs> I heard the bells on Christmas day. Um, oh, I'm so excited to start one. This one probably I won't start until closer to Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving. Um, but I told you last time that I'm on the hunt for a beautiful linen and while I was at Thread Needle Street, I found a beautiful linen. Ooh, won't that be so beautiful? So now I have to start gathering slowly the floss. It's, it calls for silks and I don't see any reason why not to go full out on this one. Uh, this is, picture this plus fawn. And I'm going to buy the call for silks once I can find them though. The, the silver is actually a metallic, so I might have something that will work for that. Um, but the red, I think it was the red was out of stock when I checked. So I'll either have to find the, the ones or figure out what they look like and substitute for something similar. Um, but I think that the, the elegance of the, silk is justified for this project. It'll be a an heirloom one. I think it's gorgeous. So that one's in the prog in the progress, in the works. Obviously not starting it right away, but I will be starting Autumn Town and Hocus Pocus. Okay. This was a birthday gift which I have already <laughs> flagged up because it has so many cute projects. Cross Stitch for the Earth, Emma Congdon, which I, um, I really love. I, I love her projects. And it's like words, but not words. So I don't think I can show. There we go. For those of you who are curious what's in the book, I think this will be my first stitch. I think that is so cool. Um, though I love many of them. I think they're really sweet. I also love this one. That'll keep me entertained for a while. Not going to start any just yet, just because I have a lot going on and, you know, a one finish, finish one, start three ratio is probably good enough. <laughs> um, but probably in the new year, I'll start one of these. I'm very excited too. This was from my father-in-law. So not that he watches my videos, but if you're out there, thank you. 
It's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, my last piece of haul. I don't know if a birthday gift counts as haul. Sure it does, yes it does, it totally does. It's new, new. Um, my last piece of haul. So I actually went to Threadneedle Street twice because the first time I had a list, I was mostly looking for floss, found a couple pieces of linen, found a pattern, you know, things kind of find their way to you. But um, for the most part, I was very focused. But when I walked in, this beauty was hanging on the first shelf, I guess, I saw. And I literally gasped. I mean, I was like, oh, she's so beautiful. <laughs> and I picked her up and then I saw the price. And I was like, oh, I can't do that. And the things on my list. And, um, and... And I continued to look and every time I walked by her, I would like reach towards her and then be like, Laura, put your hands in your pockets <laughs> because you can't have her. Um, and so I was, I was good and I went home and I got my goodies and I had a good time still, but it's like, oh, sorry. Um, it's kind of like you have to pick, right? <laughs> can't have it all, even though I want to. Um, but I couldn't get her out of my head for days like she was just there and she was the only one sh that was in the store and I'd never seen her before it's a um, um anyway it's a kit and I went back and I bought it because you only live once and it's only money and so I spent all my spending money in the first few days of the month I don't have to talk about that. I don't have to talk about it. Isn't she beautiful? It was everything I could do, you guys, to not start it before I shared her with you. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's like the secret garden grown up. It's like... It's like a girl of the Limberlost. She's so elegant and I mean the book the birds the flowers a little nest down here I mean her dress and it doesn't show very well in the picture but like there's scroll work there's detail in her underslip and I mean and uh -huh. this is a big project full coverage all kitted up and on pre-gridded I'm still debating this fabric. I haven't pulled it out yet, but I tend to find linens or even weaves more comfortable. And so I've considered swapping the fabric out for probably still a gridded since it is full coverage, um, but perhaps a Lugana instead. It just might be more comfortable to stitch on. We'll see. We'll see how it feels when I pull it out. But I'm in love. I, I just couldn't get her out of my head. I can hardly wait to start her. She will be started this week. She might, in fact, become my new Sunday stitch because, okay, confession. I made a mistake in Consider the Lilies, uh, which has been my stitch for Sundays. But Sundays are pretty busy. I haven't done a lot of stitching on Sundays. And when I have, I have completely avoided Considered the Lilies. It is also in timeout, apparently. <laughs> Without like formally putting it in timeout, apparently the mis mistake just like killed my joy, and I I pick it up and I'm like, oh, it's so pretty, Meh. and I stitch something else. So we're gonna just give some time to consider the lilies and start this one because I'm totally into this one right now, and I'm super. I, mm. She is called Into Dreamland by Letty Stitch. I'm very excited. I'm so glad I went back. Worth it. Okay, that is where are my notes. I closed my book that had my notes in it, which was not ideal. Oh, there it is, okay. Okay, so that's my stitching, my haul, my birthday start. My plans for the next couple of weeks 
are pretty much working on what you've seen with perhaps a couple of exceptions. I'm ready to start putting as much autumn into my rotation as possible. And I'm tempted to start letting some Halloween stitches slip into there as well. But I've been debating since I do have my, um, my schedule, which has been working for me, having kind of themed days has worked really well for making progress consistently. And so I'd like to continue that, but I have to kind of redefine some of my days because I'm not sure, um, <laughs> I'm not sure that they all apply to my spooky stitch lineup. So I kind of, for October, I mean, it may start before, but I've given myself some time to kind of ruminate and figure this out. Um, I'm still going to keep Stitch Along Saturdays because I've got a couple that apply. I've got the Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. I've got Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. I've got my Fantasy Stitch, which is, you know, there's a leaf. It's fine. Um, I'm still making progress on it if I want to. It might get totally tossed off to the wayside so that I can work on Hawk Run Hollows because those are gorgeous <laughs> and far more obviously seasonal. Um, anyways, so I mean that day will stay the same. I'm going to keep Stargazer on Mondays for Mira Monday, um, but the other days I'm not sure. Whatever Wednesday is going to stay the same because that just works for me to be able to bounce around a few projects on a day if I want to. Um, anyways, so I'm working on kind of redefining those for the seasons specifically. And I haven't really settled on anything yet, but it's 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 rolling around in the noggin. Um, yeah, yeah. So plans. I'll, I'll pretty much stay the same. I will start Autumn Town. I will start my beautiful Into Dreamland. So it's gonna be a fun couple weeks. We'll see how far I get. Um, okay, this is the point where formal video. Oh, pause. <laughs> Rewind, I am honored and thrilled and humbled and excited to tell you guys that um, Lala D Stitches has 2,000 followers as of this morning, which is, <laughs> what? You guys are awesome, thank you so much. I, <laughs> I can't even believe it. I can't even believe it, you guys. Thank you. Um, I would love to do a giveaway. Since it is going into spooky stitch, stitching season. Oh, oh. oh, where did it go? Okay, well, you saw it. We're going into spooky season and my next video will be right at the end of this month if we stick to the timeline, which I don't see any reason why we won't um, then September 30th would be my next video and so that's when I would announce the winner and so I am going to do since it's 2000 we'll do two giveaways um, the first one will be scaredy cats pattern it's gently used I didn't mark it up or anything um, it just has some light wrinkles to the page but it's in great condition so and and it's just okay I've got to find it well okay I can't find it anyways I will find it the it still has the um, little ornament buttons um, which I chose not to put on mine uh, so they are still intact in the pattern so if you liked that um, that option is still available to you without having to do anything. So that's pretty fun. And then the second one, in keeping with um, kind of the spooky autumn season, is one that I already finished. And it's going to be, oh heavens, can we get it to focus? When... When the owl sings, the night goes silent. Um, super cute, really quick stitch. Um, I'll show you my finish here 
as my first finish, but it has little beads and it still has enough to do, to do it again. So, um, we're going to call, so if you would like to win, I would say for Scaredy Cat, we're going to say, please put something in your comment that says cat. And this one will be owl. Okay. So for the owl sings, we'll say owl. For Scaredy Cat, we'll say cat. And I will um, do just the random comment generator to have it pick the winner uh, before. Let's see, I'll do it on the 28th, we'll say. So by the 28th, I'm going to write this down. 28th um, of this month, of September, um, if you leave that comment. And that's when I will do the generator. And then on the vi for the video on the 30th, I'll announce the winner. And then we'll get those out in the mail ASAP so you can have some fun spooky stitches. Um, because... 2000 that's awesome uh very exciting um please don't say i know everybody says this but it's real i don't want spammers in the comments as much as possible so don't say you know win or or you know any of those triggery words that would have the spam bots coming in because we want only the fun real people comments <laughs> um yeah okay so our first giveaway it's so exciting i think um I, I can't believe that we're doing it this fast, but, <laughs> but it's super fun. I'm super excited. Okay, so that's the end of today's update. And now we're going to go into the finish parade. If you've made it this far, let's keep chugging. <laughs> Maybe take a pause, get a drink, take a potty break. Gracie's unconscious down here, so we're just going to keep going. Okay, I think I've made enough notes. I'm going to flip the page on this. Um, I have... Um, this, these are in no particular order. <laughs> we'll start with When the Owl Sings, just so that you guys can see that in relation to the um, <clears throat> giveaway first. But other than that, it, I can kind of tell you timeline-ish, but they're just, you know, they just wind up in the bucket. So one day they'll wind up on a wall <laughs> or something, <laughs> or maybe they'll just stay in the bucket. That's okay too. They were fun to stitch, right? It's about the process. Okay. So here is when the owl, oh, fiddle, sings. Oh! It is so cute. I did switch out a couple of colors. So I really like purple in correlation with kind of Halloween, autumn, and this felt very autumn to me. So I swapped out one of the oranges for, or golds for a purple. I think it was a gentle art one. Um, but everything else is pretty much the same. Sometimes you just have to make it unique. Anyway, super fun. This one, I mean, it stitched up so fast. Really fun. And it was, I think it's on a 40 count and it was just one over two. So really fun. Finish parade. Here we go. This one has been on my wall behind us. It's frosted pumpkin stitchery, but now you get to see it up close, which it's a little, I mean, it's a quilt, so it's soft, but... I started it in 2016. That's when I got back into things. I finished it the following year and then it sat in my bucket for years. And I just got it soft finished. I hadn't even thought to put it in like a little mini quilt form. Why? As a quilter, I didn't think, oh, let's finish this cross stitch as a quilt. <laughs> I don't know, but I didn't. And so it just sat curled up in a bucket and I finally saw somebody else do something similar to this with a different project. And I was like, oh, oh, that would be perfect. And I don't have to spend any money because I've got a whole room full of fabric and padding. <laughs> so here we go. I did it with the called for colors. 
It's just on that um, oatmeal even weave that you can get at Joann's or something. Super fun. Really, really cute. Frosted pumpkin stitch stitchery. I want to say... Do I have the name? I don't remember the name of that one. Okay, my next one, my next finish was a pandemic. So at the onset of the pandemic, so many uh, designers were extremely generous and released free patterns for all of us stitchers to do with all of our extra time. And I, to be honest, didn't have a lot of extra time. I worked retail and I was still working. It was less than I was prior to the pandemic, but I was still working and I was doing things at home to try to make, it was a small business, you know, try to make it continue to be successful and survive <laughs> the lack of people wandering through the shop. And, um, oh, I could have sworn I took a picture of this. Um, apparently not. Okay, we'll just show you the finish. Um, anyways, Satsuma Street does, she has the funnest sense of color. I mean, she's just bold and sometimes a little retro and it is, she finds these antique needle points that I, I would give my kidney for. Um, they are so cute. Um, but this was her pandemic release. So it was free to the public. Um, and my sister and I both did it. My sister, oh my gosh, she did it tiny. I think the whole thing is three inches tall. It is so cute. And while she was working on it, I thought she was crazy. I still think she's crazy, but it turned out so adorable. And she put it in this little white frame. It's so different from mine, but it's absolutely charming. I had this purple Ada on hand. And so I just used that. I thought it was, it was fun. And, um, I, I want to say that I changed one or two of the colors so that they would show more because I did do it on purple. Um, but anyway, let's stay home, <laughs> which is perfect for my little home body heart. I am perfectly content to stay home, stitch, read, and watch my TV shows and snuggle with my puppy or play my piano and <laughs> and not go anywhere. And occasionally I have to get out just to like reconnect with humanity and then I'm content again to just stay home. So it had multiple levels of appropriateness. <laughs> I'm gonna just set that down there. That's actually the chart. Um, it is still free on her website, by the way, satsumastreet.com. I double checked because I wasn't sure. Some people just did a temporary release and then others like her, um, she just has it still available for everybody. So if you're interested, it is still available for a free download. And she's got a couple other cute ones. In fact, I downloaded, there's a little bird that's like orange and gold and red, and it is super cute. And I totally downloaded that one too. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> we collect as we go. Um, this one, Nest Egg, Satsuma Street again, Jody Rice. I mean, it's so cute. And it's Easter without being juvenile, I guess, is the way to say it. Oh. These eggs were super fun to stitch. I mean, they're fiddly because you do like five stitches in one color and then swap it out, but but they're super fun. They're very satisfying. And this is my finish. I'll get this one in a frame before spring comes again. I think I could fit it in a eight by 10 or something like that really easily and um, with a little tiny mat. It's super fun. This is just an even weave um, that was on the Satsuma Street site, I'm pretty sure, at the time I bought the pattern. I finished this one a couple of years ago. Mmm, I love it. Super, super fun. And who doesn't love a little, a little goose? Mother goose vibes right there. Fresh, happy colors. 
These ones, I do not know where they come. Well, I have an idea of where they came from. I don't know the names or the book. Um, it was a, it was, um, okay, a little, little factoid history about me. I was previously married and um, I lived with my parents for a time after the divorce or during the divorce. And, um, and it was an attempt to keep my brain busy by keeping my hands hizzy, hizzy. <laughs> hands busy oh my goodness my brain's shutting down you guys I am so sorry <laughs> anyways these are just a couple of phrases they came out of a book of like phrases we're as happy as we make our minds to be make up our minds to be and I look at these I haven't framed them because I've thought well maybe I would just use these as a chart and um, do them in brighter colors when you meet a person without a smile, give him one of yours. My grandma had done a few of these, so they made me think of her and, you know. This one's pretty cute. I actually like this one. The border is sweet. Has a little bit more color when you get up close to it. And I like that notion. We should be giving people smiles as much as we can. We never know what's going on in their life and it might be exactly what they need. Plus, you feel better when you smile, don't you? Even if everything else is painful, like your head wants to explode, if you smile, you know, it's a little bit okay. This one, love one another. This is one of my first stitches. So it was probably three or four in my, number three or four in my, what I would have considered bigger grown-up stitches as a child. I probably did this in junior high-ish, would be my guess. Uh, it came from a magazine, old magazine. I did find, if you look up Love One Another Teddy Bear Porch, it sounds so funny, but I was like, I'll never find this if I type this in, and it was the first thing that came up. I found it from one seller on Etsy. I don't know where the chart came from, but like I said, it's a probably late 80s, early 90s magazine. Um, and I was a little girl who loved stuffed animals, so teddy bears. <laughs> it's not framed. I don't know if I will frame this one. I like looking at it. It's really sweet. I actually did a surprisingly good job on it for my age and, you know, skill level at the time. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's my thing anymore. Maybe if I have kids, I'll put it, if we ever adopt or anything, I'll put it in their room and be like, you'll like this or whatever. <laughs> oh, heavens. Tangents. This is a beacon at daybreak, I think. Yes. It's a Dimensions Gold Petite. Um, which sounds tiny and easy, but this took an entire summer to stitch because there's a lot going on. Um, oh, I love it. I love the finish of it. It's been laying on the top of my stack and every time I walk by it this week, I was like, oh, I need to get that in a frame. <laughs> it's so pretty. Really fun. I have all four. There are four little lighthouses the same size. Um, and I have all four of them. I've started another one, but then I ran into a white fence that was evil and I stopped for the summer. It's okay, we'll come back to it. Okay, this is a Bent Creek ornament called Snowbound on Mystery Linen from My Stash. <laughs> it's so cute too. I love this one. I think I did this one last year. And I want to get it um, finished, probably like on a cardboard finish, how people do it. I think that would be really cute for an ornament. Um, I love the little snowflakes and how they come down into the ground as well. Super cute, super fast. This next one is also an ornament, a bit bigger. I don't normally excuse me, go for a big ornaments, but this one's called Flamingo Bells. <laughs> 
and it just gave me a giggle when I saw it. And look at his socks. <laughs> Candy cane socks. I mean, I, you just can't beat it. The original pattern also says Flamingo Bells down here. It's a hands-on design. And they finished it um, with like a curve up here and straight. And I'll probably attempt some sort of tomfoolery of similar ilk. Um, because it looked really cute. I, <laughs> I'm not a big flamingo person, but this one just gave me a giggle. What a hoot. Flamingo bells. <laughs> I also have a cheap, crappy little towel for summertime that says, let's flamingo. <laughs> Pun intended. Uh, okay. We're going into a weird place in my brain now. <laughs> this is the first large piece I ever finished. Big. And it was a uh, teddy bear, <laughs> naturally. Um, but I pulled this out and I, I knew it was in the stack and I was like, oh yeah, that teddy bear one. But I pulled this out and I was like, oh my gosh, that's actually really pretty. Maybe I should get this framed and just put it up in my sewing room or a bedroom. I've got a lot of blue in our bedroom. I think it's really sweet. And again, I did a really good job for being, I mean, this one I probably started when I was closer to nine or 10. Um, I've been stitching for a long, long time. It is called Antique Teddies by Creative Accents, which I think has some kind of relation to dimensions, don't quote me on that, but um, it's number 7964, and I did find it on Etsy, a full kit that was unopened. If you have somebody who loves teddy bears in your life, probably counts technically, it has a sampler in it, right? It's a sampler, maybe. One thing that is pretty truly atrocious on that one is my French knots. I had not mastered French knots yet, and they were they were special. But it's okay when you get far enough away. It just looks like berries on a bush. Okay, this one is called Sweet Spring. It is also Satsuma Street. Oh, happy! It's just happy. This is just from an out of the box blue even weave. Nothing fancy. Don't always need something fancy. This one I also unrolled and thought, oh my goodness, I have got to get this framed this year because it fits my Santa mood. Mm. This is Believe in Santa by Twin Creek Primitives. It is stitched on 32 count chestnut, Weeks Dye Works linen, and I customized the colors. So they did DMCs, uh, which is great. And I think, nope, I swapped all of them out for over dyed. It's, it's a mix. But I love the texture it gave. You know, in his coat, and in person, even the lamb has um, has just a little bit of movement to it, which just gave it a bit of magic. And again, I had them in my sash, so why not play with it? Whenever I swap out colors, I always try to honor the original design as much as possible, unless it's a true color conversion. Um, so I laid out the call for colors and then found over dyes that would complement those. And so it's still in keeping with the original colors, uh, but it has my own little personal spin on it. Believe in Santa. This is the first stitch I ever did on linen. And it was my introduction into over dyes. I wanted, I think I've said that about that. They're very similar time periods. Maybe it could be that uh, 
my brain just went yellow submarine I started first and then I did this anyways similar time period doesn't really matter this is turkey dressing uh, which is a raise the roof designs and I'm not a big button person but these buttons were pretty darn cute and they really rounded out the design nicely I don't know why I don't have this one framed but my mom has done some framing and so she gave me some tips on adding mats to add depth for uh, the buttons and and I'm definitely gonna going to attempt it to this year because it's so fun I don't really have anything post Halloween pre Christmas to put on the walls um, so that'll be really fun that one was fun to stitch I will say I did not enjoy doing the dress and the shirt because that's a lot of black in big blocks and generally I like to have a little bit more going on but it was still really fun and a good learning experience okay this next one is um, Coco Maru 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 um, God, butcher butcher it. I'll, I'll, Gara it's a Gara design that's her name Kyoko um, I have done this one this is so much fun to stitch this one I loved um, and I did it on a really big count I think it's somewhere between a 13 and a 14 count ultimately it was just a scrap of fabric I had even weave and I did it with three strands I wanted it to be nice and bulky because I am gonna finish this one as a pillow and so I wanted it to have kind of a needlepoint feeling to it without being needlepoint look at the bee on a string <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's so cute. I'm not a big gnome person, but this one had enough flowers to make it magical. I also have plans to do this little guy on the swing. <laughs> so, so cute. And I'll probably finish that one as a needle book or something like that. That one was a lot of fun. Okay, this one called aquamarine owl with my mangled mangled pattern I was not always as careful with patterns as I am now <laughs> um, it and it was a digital download this was a birthday present from my sweet sister who spoiled me that year she not only surprised me by coming to see me on my birthday from out of state but she gave me this pattern and said let's go to acorns and thread and buy all the stuff for it Oh my goodness, I am a lucky girl. So, this was my birthday start that year, which you'll actually, if you're on my Instagram, it's one of my first posts on my Lala D Stitches Instagram page, was me with basically the kit. Um, and this is the finish. Oh, he's so handsome. the crazy feathers coming out of his head and everything oh, I will confess I had to stitch that belly like three times because there's actually four or five different colors in there and they all blend together and it's the devil but it all turned out oh he's so cute this is a week dye works linen I'm not sure what color but I can kind of tell they have their they have a very specific hand to them um, they're floppier that one I would love to get framed to put on my gallery back here gotta have an owl represent okay these were tiny little ancient kits for ornaments I don't know what they're called or where they came from they're very simple but sometimes you just need something Fun and comforting I did these a number of years ago just to have something to stitch okay Barbara Anna designs which house <laughs> she's 
snoring. I imagine she's snoring. Oh my goodness. Her designs are not complicated, but they have so much whimsy and fun to them. I really enjoy Barbara Anna. And she has a very distinct style, like this vine feature is repeated through a lot of her designs and I love it. I love it when designers create a flavor for themselves. Yeah, really fun. I think I just did that one with called for colors. That one I should find a frame for in the next couple weeks. Maybe when I go out for Scaredy Cat, I will also look for that one because that one would just be like a little seven by five probably. Easy, easy peasy. Okay, this one is so fun. This is one of those ones that just like, you found it, you fell in love, you bought the stuff, you did it. And it all just flowed because it was just the right thing at the right moment. Blue flower, strawberry bird love this design. I, I mean, I love the blue flower. I love um, Janine McGowan and all of her designs. The way she has animals through all of her stuff and it got several of her patterns and several patterns kitted up and I, I just love them. This one, I saw the pattern and I liked it so much and then I was wandering around and I saw this buttery yellow linen and it happened. It had to happen at that point. I was like, oh my gosh, wouldn't it be so pretty on there? Strawberry bird. Oh, it's washing out. Can't really see the yellow. Anyway. I love it. It was so much fun. I enjoyed every single stitch of this. I think I started and finished it in the space of three months, maybe one month. <laughs> it was, it wasn't very long. It was a really happy, joyful stitch through a really, really stressful spring for me. And it just, ah, this one will be on my wall next year. Maybe not in the next couple months. I don't think I'll frame it in the next couple months just because got other things to focus on. But, but certainly by next late spring, early summer, we've got to have some strawberries. Man, yeah, that was a this year finish. That one, that one's a recent. So is this one. This one is also on my Instagram because it's this year. And it too just kind of was the right thing at the right time and I love it. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Can we say cute? Look at that lighthouse. Look at those happy people on the beach. So I, I did a couple of alterations on this one. The original has very fair skinned people. They look like ghosts. And then um, it's also charted with DMCs. And a couple, I think the blue is the only, the dark blue was the only variegated. And I really loved the idea of a little bit more because that's my jam. Um, so I swapped out my red. I recharted her hair. So her hair was just like, I think it was pigtails originally. And I'm not five, I don't, okay, I'm a liar. I do wear pigtails sometimes, usually when I'm hiking because I can still wear a hat and I don't have to deal with putting my ponytail through that stupid little hole at the back of your hat. Not worth it. Pigtails, low, then you can just wear the hat and not get ticks in your hair. Pro tip. <laughs> um, so I recharted her hair to be a ponytail and then my husband has um, just a bit more pigment in his skin in summer. He just goes brown. <laughs> I don't know what it is. He just goes completely brown. So I charted him with a little bit darker skin. And I love it. I love that they show a little bit more. I'm still very fair. I'm pasty. It's okay. I can stay pasty. But, <laughs> but he's not pasty in any way, shape, or form. So... Yeah, really fun. I'm really happy with this one. I don't know how to finish it. It's long and skinny again. Maybe I'll have to bite the bullet and custom frame it or something, but 
Um, we'll see. We've got a whole year till summer comes around again. Okay. This was one of my, this may be the second project I bought um, when I got back into cross stitch. Once upon a time sampler, it was done as a sal uh, with frosted pumpkin stitchery once upon a time. <laughs> and um, I, I mean, I'm a fairy tale girl. I love it. I, I think it's absolutely charming. Um, the princess and the pea and I mean, okay, let's get to the real thing. So this, remember, second project. I was poor, 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 poor. And I went to Joann's and I bought the fabric that I stitched the other frosted pumpkin on. And it was big enough, I thought, that I could get two out of. So I started it. This is gonna have to be a soft finish, you guys, because <laughs> look at my margin. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's just enough to put a binding around or add a little tiny border to, and that's fine. Frankly, you know, that'll be a nice pairing to the other one to have it in a soft finish. So I'm not really bothered by it, but it is kind of funny to pull it out and be like, whoa, whoa, girl, what were you thinking? You were thinking that this chart is adorable. Frog Princess, Snow White, Princess and the Pea. <laughs> I added a little bit of backstitching around her basket, Thumbelina's basket, because the colors were so close. If I had been more adventurous when I originally stitched that block, I may have, um, well, when I started the project really, because by the time I got there, I had a lot more experience, but the greens, where all of these, you know, olive, avocado kind of greens through the whole project. So it didn't make sense to make one bright lily pad in the midst of all of these things. So I just added back stitching so it would show a little bit more and not be so blendy. Ooh, we've got sunshine. Anyways, it's pretty cute. I just, you can see, I just finished this last year because Procrastination Station is my name. Um, It'll be really fun. I might finish that, like fully finish that this year. Okay, let me pull down. We've got we've got two more cross stitches, and then we'll go really quickly through the embroidery finishes. Uh, this is one of my first, first, first projects. And I have traditionally hung it in my closet. In my, not my closet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my, <laughs> hung it in my closet, stupid cross stitch. No, I um, hang it in my kitchen. <laughs> I haven't found a good spot for it in this house yet. Um, it's just a really sweet old sampler. I was really young when I did this one. I don't even remember, but I remember sitting at home, both at home and at my grandma's house while working on it. I remember hating that house. <laughs> the patience of, I don't know, a squirrel. And then this was a kit from Joann's, I'm sure. I love the frame. Um, it's not very well framed. There's some saggy, poochy parts, but I mean, it's it's old. It was one of my first times trying, and it actually used to have a different frame. I swapped out for this frame um, a couple of years ago because the other one was really inexpensive, and it actually just didn't look that good. Um, but I've always liked butterflies. And these have kind of a Debbie Mum vibe with the checker work in the wings, <laughs> even though they're very pastel for her. Um, yeah, pretty. So that's my last cross stitch finish. Fully finished cross stitch. Okay, so let's whip through some of these. Everybody seems to want to see the embroidery and the applique, so we're gonna make it happen. Like I said, they're mostly blocks that will ultimately one day go into um, go into quilts. 
So keep that in mind. I do have pictures of the what they will ultimately be or something similar because uh, I'm definitely known to just like I swap out my colors in my cross stitch with my quilting. I am very comfortable in the quilting world and I just <sighs> patterns are a starting place not a firm <laughs> requirement so I'll start with something and wind up with something totally different. Um, a lot of Crabapple Hill Studio. I love her designs. I think they are charming and I have bought most of her larger works. So this one was this spring. I've, I've had the pattern for years and finally I was just like, I'm going to do this. Those are such pretty colors. It'll be so fun to work with. And it was. Uh, where's my paper? I threw it away. <laughs> I'm not allowed to. Oh. I'm not allowed to stand up anymore, you guys. I get completely discombobulated. Okay, stitching makes me happy. I'm just gonna frame this one, actually. It'll go on my gallery behind me or somewhere in my room. Um, got some sunshine coming through. It's super fun. I love that the word is done with uh, the chain stitch, just gives it a, a bolder finish. And then they actually had you do this with only one strand. Um, and then it is, I used color crayons to, Crayola crayons, to shade in the flowers, the leaves, very faintly, the thicker parts of the words, and yeah. I might have to adjust my blinds. Apparently we are going to get some shadows. Okay, this next one is one in a larger project um it's called snow globes and excuse me one minute i'm just going to try to uh does it make it too dark in here is that too dark we'll find out try to get some of the glare off uh snow globes i have recently started really enjoying snow globes in the last couple years and um I tend to go for the more elegant ones. My mom had a series of absolutely gorgeous snow globes that she had bought at Costco through the years uh, when I was little and they would always sit on our, we had a brick um, surround around our fireplace. It was a, a wood stove fireplace and she would always set these four or five really gorgeous snow globes around and I mean, oh, they were elegant and beautiful. And I mean, think the Santa Claus, but without the magic, right? Like, but the same kind of ornamentation, elegant. Um, and I mean, these are not the same, but they, they give off that vibe, you know, with the detail work down here. And you can just kind of picture a, a carol playing while you look at the scene. I'm such a sap. Anyways, I plan to do them all. <laughs> I have only stitched one at this point. I think there are 12. And it still has, these will all still have my basting stitches in them. Those will stay until they're actually in the quilt probably. So we're at least ready to be going into the quilt. We've got some um, sparkly DMC in there. And these are mostly stitched with Cosmo floss which have a really pretty variegation to them. Okay, this one I'm gonna pull out of its plastic because this is how I mark off what I've done. I make a copy of the cover sheet and then I, I scribble on the, on the plastic instead of the actual picture, except for there where I actually scribbled on the picture. Don't mind me, whatever. <laughs> This is what it will be like, or some iteration of it. Uh, Gingerbread Square, Crabapple Hill Studio again. And, oh, here, sorry. It wasn't a very long look. It's kind of blurry. It's, it's a copy of the original, so I could track it. I think I have done two or three of the nine so far. And I've mentioned this before, I'm a seasonal stitcher, so none of these projects are going very quickly. It's okay. 
keeps me busy. It has something, if I can't afford to go out and buy stuff for a new project or anything like that, it gives me something to work on. I know I always have something in reserve. Uh, <laughs> that's how we justify these things. <laughs> okay, this is my first gingerbread house. The same grandma who played Three Billy Goats Gruff with us also annually made gingerbread houses with us. And those are, those are sweet memories. Uh, she was delightful and she always bought an abundance of candies so we could really just go at it. And I remember some years the houses completely fell down. <laughs> we had some frosting mip mishaps as we perfected the recipe. Oh, kind of like I had a coffee mishap on this one. Don't worry, I don't think, these all get trimmed down to much closer on the block. I don't think it'll affect it, but I pretty much cried when I found it, when it happened. Oh, don't drink and stitch. I mean, they're super fun. They're fun to color. They're fun to stitch. They make me think of my grandma. I'm excited to get that one. It looks like I've only done two. I think I have one other one that's like half stitched. I actually came across in my bucket a couple unfinished blocks. I don't know why they're in the finished bucket when they're not finished, but you know, things happen, I guess. My sister and I came across these uh, Halloween camper trailers and I already had, she has a different project that has like a haunted house that's a quilt shop. So there's like quilts hanging from this wire and it says quilt shop and it's this big spooky mansion. And I said, oh my gosh, what if we did the haunted house in the middle and then we put spooky trailers, like they're all coming to visit the spooky quilt shop around it. And, um, and we both really liked that idea. So she bought a few patterns and I bought a few patterns and we are kind of creating our own Frankenstein version of, of that idea. <laughs> and so far I have one trailer completed. Ooh, the bookmobile. <laughs> I love the sparkly, um, smoke coming out of the stack there. Again, they're super fun to color and I use crayons. She says to use a white crayon underneath all of her colors. I've never found that necessary, so I don't. I, I, I get great pigment. I don't really have a problem with it. I just did the most, tr this year's trailer. It's not stitched yet though, so you don't get to see it. It's not finished, it's just in progress. Um, this is also Crab Apple Hill Studio. Like I said, they're mostly, I love her stuff. So most of my stuff will be from her work. Um, they're super cute. This one's from a pattern called Hocus Pocusville and it's all black work. So no coloring. I considered briefly, um, coloring in like, a pumpkin here or there or a sign to emphasize like one thing in each block or whatever and I've, I've decided against that. I just want this one to stay simple black and white and when I put it into a quilt um, I will I will continue with that vibe. I will, I will keep it like cream and black. Since my background is cream I'm not gonna put white white with it but just kind of keep it really simple and a little bit more classic. This one, the picture is not gonna show it well at all, unfortunately. This is one of my first larger, you know, decade projects <laughs> that I started of hers. It's one of her older ones, Snowman A to Z. And they, I don't know how much you can see, but they are charming. We've got sunshine again. You'll see a few. I have a number of these done. This one's been in the works for a while. Um, put those over there. So we have E and F, fur and elf. And I noticed 
I have not stitched his boots. <laughs> we don't know why. It's okay, we'll come back and get them. <laughs> but it was pretty much done, so it counts. We're, we're gonna look at him. You'll see that I've got a little bit of what looks like a ripple here. There's some basting stitching in there that will come out and that ripple will not be, it's not an issue, it's a non-issue. Um, it's just trying to keep the two layers together for stitching because I back all of my embroidery so you've got your background fabric and then it's like a, it, it hides cover stitches, it helps with tension, it gives a little bit more body to your work. Um, like I said, I'm also not a, I don't use hoops for my embroidery. Um, oh, I love this one. Those ornaments took forever. Forever. But they're so worth it. They're so cute. <laughs> Satin stitches. Oh, it's so fun. This one I would like to finish sometime in the next thousand years because, um, because it really is sweet. Mittens, I loved doing this one. Something about, so the holly, if I remember correctly, it looks like it's a variegated, but it's actually, yes, I can see it on the back here. It's actually three or four different colors of DMC that you swap around, which is really fun because um, she would do like a whole bow one or, like half, you know, like she broke hers up. Her color breaks up differently than I did. I wanted mine to look more like there was light playing off of the, um, what are those called? Bows. Words are hard. <laughs> Anyways, just playing with colors. Here is Snowflakes, who, he has no coal buttons or mouth right now. Just like the elf has no boots. Well, we'll come back and get him. He's still pretty much done. I also just noticed the last two also do not have the loose satin through the letters. So, you know, <laughs> there's work, people. There's work to do. This one has no stars. None of these should have been in the finished bucket. I don't know. Maybe I just get to the point where I'm like, oh, I've done so much. It must be done. And I, I oh, did you see that one well from a distance? That's cute. Up on the rooftops, Twinkle Village. I don't think it's supposed to be a title like that, but. <laughs> oh, it's okay, don't worry about it. It's been really fun as I go through picking the backgrounds because I want them to be subtle enough that they stay in the background, but they can have a little bit of, of fun whimsy to them. They kind of match the theme of winter. This one I started with my mother. She too embroiders. She does beautiful work. Um, she's slow. She watches my videos. <laughs> Um, I'm ahead of her. I have done the top row and I'm working on E and F right now. I kind of fell off the wagon. I thought I would get a lot of this done this year and then, you know, life and moving and it's okay. It'll still be here next year. Um, it's been fun to work on though. Um, I'm putting a lot more pigment into these than I've seen some people do, but I'm totally happy with it. <laughs> There's A, our sweet little butterfly up there. And B is a big one. I love this one. Doing the berries was really fun. I added some not fully ripe berries in. Seemed appropriate. Carrots. And 
Dicentra. Dicentra. Which it looks like I missed something on. Chronic. Okay, so that's all of the Crab Apple Hill Studio. Okay. This one is Gail Pan. She did a Stitch of the Month a while back, a few years ago. Oh gosh, a number of years ago, maybe closer to five years ago. Um, and there's sweet little, they're supposed to be um, like little tags. And I've seen these finished a lot of different ways. I've only done three out of the many that were released with it. And I did it in just one color of Variegated Cosmo. Um, but I think, I don't know, I've gone back and forth between doing more and potentially just stopping here and maybe finishing it in a little like long pillow or maybe in a, a runner of some kind, a wall runner or a table runner. I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm doing with these yet, but they're cute. It's super relaxing to stitch um, with just one color of floss. It just, I mean, it's just like doing cross stitch where you kind of you get into a block and you're just filling it in and you just kind of get into the groove of stitching with a long line, you know? <laughs> um, I've done, oh, we're just gonna strip my wall. Okay. This is one of the only like true traditional satin work kind of embroideries I've done. I love it. I think it's a lot of fun and it was really rewarding to do. Um, I have a number of projects saved um, that would be more along this line, but I haven't really done a lot beyond line work. Um, yeah, and this is just a little felt backed hoop finish. That one was really fun to do. Okay, I've only got a couple of applique blocks to show you. Um, not that much. This one, the pattern is actually in wool, in uh, felted wool. And um, I saw it at a quilt show, a quilt show done in needle turn applique. And so I've kind of fused the two ideas because that was gorgeous and they did it in fig tree fabrics and I loved that so I've kind of some of my fabrics are fig tree and some of them are not but they have that kind of vibe um so they're just so fun they're just so cute I think I still have to add owl owl eyes I've got a couple little details to add in but really they're pretty much ready to go into quilts at this point and I love I love textured like low volume backgrounds um, so this this has been really fun I'm almost finished with the third block in this project um, and I'm mixing in wool and cotton so you can see here I've got some felted wool beautiful hand dyed stuff in some of the smaller pieces and the rest is needle turn applique with little hints of um oh, oh only the chimney <laughs> only one little piece of wool on this one but each one will get a little bit of wool so that they are all cohesive through the project and um yeah super fun real slow going not in a again not in a hurry i'm doing it because it's fun and you know you kind of Follow your heart with these things. This project, Jen Kingwell, it's at, well, it's the Jen Kingwell Collective. This one's actually designed by Michelle McKillop. McKillop? Oof, blurry, sorry. Meadow, oh, I love this project. Oh my gosh. I have the center finished. That took a couple of weeks. Not because it's complicated, but because it laid out on my floor. I literally, I spent a day going through all of my scraps and then laying them out in this ombre rainbow and then 
tweaking fabrics here and there. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, this would look better if it was over here. What if I did this? And I'd just walk away and come back. And I mean, it took a couple of weeks to get everything where I wanted it to. And then the same with the rainbow is supposed to kind of follow the flowers along the border. So what I'm going to show you are some of the flowers that I've completed so far. It takes forever to kit up, but it's super fun. It's such a creative process. And playing with fabric is definitely one of my happy places. Okay. It's kind of a funny one. It looks like he's sticking his tongue out. <laughs> Never gonna look at it the same again. Okay, and these all have, I've kept with a black and white or cream and white kind of similar background on all of them. And then um, this one is not my best work. That circle <laughs> is terribly uneven. That's okay. It's all good. I do like the fussy cut pansy in there. Yeah. Ooh, I like that one. So this is one of the corners. That's why it's on, on point, really, is that will be nestled into one of the corners to create that border going around. Anyways, super fun. As you can see, I kind of dabble all around the place. I, <laughs> I really have a good time. Um, I did have a question on my Instagram post if I keep all of my quilts. And... Um, the answer is no, I don't. In fact, uh, for most of my quilting life, I have given away most of my quilts. I love to make gifts of my quilts. Um, as a result, I noticed about a year, year and a half ago, that I have very few quilts in my home. <laughs> it does not look, other than this room, most of the year, it does not look like a quilter lives in my home. And I felt like that was a real sadness because that's one of the things I always loved about my home growing up and my grandmother's home was that there were quilts and projects finished throughout all of those spaces. And it was such a comfortable, eclectic, truly, like it spoke to their personalities. Each of their homes was different. And, and I've always wanted my home to be like that. And so I, I do not uh, keep all of my projects, but most of the projects I am working on for the next probably year or two, with a couple exceptions, are, are for my home. And that's really exciting to have, um, to have some things to cuddle over, under in my own home. So, so no, but for a while, yes, I guess. <laughs> um, anyways... Uh, if you've stuck with me this long, oh my goodness, we are beyond two hours. This is definitely a sit and stitch kind of episode. Um, I hope you've enjoyed. It's sure been fun to go through to go through my things and share them with you and just kind of get reacquainted with some of my older projects and um, revisit some of those memories. It's been really good. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity to do this. Thank you for sticking with it. <laughs> even if it took you a couple of sessions, because I know it's a long one. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week, a wonderful month. We're already halfway through September. It's lunacy how fast this year is going. Um, I will be back with you in a couple of weeks. And until then, I hope you have happy days and happy stitching. And I will talk to you all very soon. Take care. <laughs>